working on Wednesday nights. He's working seven 24s. I said he never gives up. He's always punching the clock. He's always doing what he can to destroy you. He don't take vacations and he does not believe in holidays. He is on the clock 24 7 for him and he's there to destroy your life for he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour but I come to serve notice tonight that greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. I've got a victory that the devil can't take away. Hallelujah. You see, friend, I want to tell you something. Sometimes your family member, they just need to hear you say the devil's a liar. What he's been telling you is a lie. Or the devil will tell you you can't make it. You can't overcome it. You can't keep the victory. You can't make it with God. You're nothing but a coward. You're nothing but a hypocrite. You're nothing but this and that and the other. But I want to tell you right now, I don't care what the devil's accusing you of tonight. You rise up in the faith of God tonight and you tell him this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He is my hope. He is my glory. He is everything to me. Oh, friend, I want to tell you, he is everything to me and the devil can't take it away. Don't forget your family. For so many years, the preaching from the pulpit has been single preaching. Amen. Preaching to people, trying to bless them in the problems they're in with no one having obligation to do anything else other. But friend, I want to tell you right now, the obligation of God is upon our shoulders tonight. The devil is taking them faster than we can reach them. And it's up to us to hold them. It's up to us to preserve them. It's up to us to sanctify them. It's up to us to teach them how to love God. Amen. To how to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. When I first got saved, I didn't know the things that I know now. I didn't have the strength that I have now. I didn't have the victory that I have now. I didn't have the testimony that I have now. Until you fight a giant, you'll never know you can beat a giant. Until you conquer a lion, you'll never know you can conquer one. Until you defeat a bear, you'll never know you can. But when the testimony comes, you got something else to stand on. Oh, friend, I want to tell you, and even then, you need a neighbor. You need a brother. You need a sister. It says, remember that giant you fought last year. Don't you remember the giant you fought last year? And God gave you the victory. That same God. Woo! That same God will give you the victory over this one. I want to tell you there's a reason why David draw five smooth stones out of that brook. He got five out of that brook, Brother Wayne, for a reason. And it wasn't because he was afraid he was going to miss. No, 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 no. He wasn't scared he was going to miss with that first rock. He knew that giant had four more brothers. Well, I wish I had a Christian testimony tonight. He knew that that giant had four more just like him. And he said, I'm going to get one for every one of his nappy-headed brothers too. Oh, how to my son down in the hell. I'm going to win this battle. And I come to tell you tonight that David didn't only just kill Goliath, but he slew every one of the family members of Goliath. You see, that's what's wrong with some of us. We win one battle, and we get mad at God when the next one comes. I want to tell you, David got prepared before the battle even came. He looked at that one giant and said, Oh, oh you got four brothers, don't you? I got something for your whole stinking family. Ooh. I felt the Holy Ghost boldness come on me right then. I want to tell you right now. You see, some of y'all, y'all just need to get an anger in the Holy Ghost against the devil. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent will take it by force. Hallelujah. I want to tell you right now, you need to get violent in the Holy Ghost and fight this good fight of faith. It ought to make us fighting mad. I'm talking about Duke slinging mad 
when we see the enemy come in here and try to take one of ours away. That's my brother. Amen. That's my sister. And devil, you can't have them. I feel like fighting tonight. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. I said, I feel like throwing down tonight. Just scratching out in the sand and saying, bring it on, devil. You pick this fight. I'm going to give you all you can handle. Oh, let me introduce you to my big brother, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh glory to God. I want to tell you, don't forget the family tonight. You see, I still believe that some things are worth fighting for. I will tell you, you worth it. Y'all ain't got that yet. I'm going to tell you, I said you worth it. You worth a fight. Yeah, you are. You my family. And I fight for my family. You ever want to get in a fight with me physically? I'm talking about physical. Throw down, kick, and fight. You want to fight me? Mess with my wife and kids. We're going to put preaching aside right then, but we're going to take care of business. You understand what I'm saying? I believe in the gift of repentance. Hey Amen. I can tell you right now, you mess with mom and them babies, you're going to get all you can handle the boy heart. You might whip me, but you're going to know I've been there. I'm going to skin just my head up. Hey Amen. Well, I'm not bragging. I'm bro- being both cetaceous or any of that sort. I'm just trying to tell you, it's my duty as a husband. It's my duty as a father to protect them and to keep them and preserve them and to provide for them. And I can tell you, I love my job. Amen. Now I want to tell you this. We in this house... We're family. I'm going to tell you, you're worth fighting for, Brother Wayne. I I don't mind getting skin up a little bit for you. I got your back. I don't mind getting skin up for you, buddy. You're my brother. You're my family. We're blood kin. We're blood kin. We're not distant kin. We're blood kin, Ricky. We've all had blood transfusions in here. And our Father gave us the blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And Brother Murphy, you're worth fighting for. I can tell you, the devil's going to come to get you. But when he comes to get you and he knocks you down, it's my job to pick you back up. Amen. It's my job to encourage you. It's my job to strengthen you. It's my job to have your back and say, oh, you ain't in this fight alone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, I remember I got so many throwdowns in my life and back in my younger days. And thank God for some good friends that wasn't scared to get skin up with me. I had some old boys that would fight to the bitter end. We all walked away bleeding a minute time. But I want to tell you something right now. Amen. You'll have a bond with them for the rest of your life because they shed their blood with you. They sweated with you. They labored with you. They were there for you. And I want to tell you, some things aren't worth fighting for. We got us back. We got your back. We got yours. We're together. Amen. We're family, my That's brother. Right. And I want to tell you, a family that will stand together will last. I said they'll last. You know, there ain't nothing to this mamsy pamsy stuff that people are calling family today. And when a crisis arises, they, they run to someone else other than family. Man, that's hogwash. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm telling you, there is a such thing called dedication and loyalty. And God's a looking for it in the body of Christ. He's looking for it in the brethren and the sisters of God to be loyal and faithful to each other. I believe in God this year to bind the family of God closer together than it's ever been. You see, I'm going to tell you something. Men, very intelligent, smart men, have put together programs how to build a church. And I've studied a bunch of them. Because I'm going to tell you right now, don't none of y'all want the church to grow more than me. I want it to grow. I'd love for us to have 5,000 people. But I've come to grips with something. It don't make no difference to me if we're five or 5,000 long as we're family long as we've got it in proper perspective amen that we've got everything in it proper order that we're doing what God has told us to do amen I know I'm preaching a long time but I've just got to get this to you tonight amen God is wanting us to put our focus back on relationship with each other amen building a unity and bond of family amen that we can walk in one mind and one accord now Let me say this before I move on. We've heard preachers preach it in our Pentecostal churches a hundred years now. How well if we can just get one mind and one accord. Let me tell you something. That ain't going to magically happen. We're not going to come in here tonight and puff the magic dragon and that just happened. 
okay? We're not going to be in here and all of us in one mind and one accord because some of y'all don't like me too well. Some of y'all think I'm loud. Some of y'all likes me. Some of you don't. Some of you say I'm all right. Some of us wish I'd shut up right now and go home. So that tells me that we're not all in one mind and in one accord. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. So but when we get in one mind and one accord, amen, we'll see the power of God unfold in a way that you've never, ever seen in your lifetime. How can this be the same way it was in this Bible? The Bible said that there was a special flavor upon the children of God at that time. What was that flavor? that drew the world to them. The Bible says they knew that they were his disciples by the love they had one for another. Let me tell you how the lesson was taught to Peter before the cock crows thrice. You'll deny me. God had to sift him, Brother Wayne. Like wheat. Let me tell you what needs to happen to us. God needs to sift us. Get the purities out of the junk. So all the junk can be thrown into the fire and burned with it. You know, I, I believe that the family of God that really, truly loves each other, they like to do things in fellowship with each other. They want to show up and help each other. You know, I can't stand it when my wife has been working all day long and, and I've been out working all day long and my wife is like a bee. She's busy <laughs> all the time. She just got to be doing, you know. And she comes home and if there's clothes that's got to be done, she's doing the clothes. Now, she does not want me touching clothes, thank God, because they all won't stay the same color. You know what I'm saying? I'll mess them up doing clothes. But my wife, she's always working and doing and going and doing and going and going and moving around. And, I, and I, sometimes I'll just beg her, won't you just stop? She said, well, we've got all these things to do. I can't quit right now. i got to get some things done. You know, and then it hits me, you know. Well, why don't you just help out? Instead of all the responsibility just piling up on one person, taking advantage of that, pull the team together. Then guess what? We get to sit down together a little bit later. But when I dump all my responsibility, and I'm going to say our responsibilities, because just because she's the female don't mean all the house work long. And what I've learned is, is that if I would actually help my little bride, I get to spend some time with her. Because we can clean the kitchen pretty quick now, can't we, sister? Because we done figured out how to do it together. We're a team. We can get it done together. We get ready to clean the house, we clean it together. And we get to sit down and spend relationship time together. You see, I told you 13 is going to be a relationship building here for us. Fellowship times. We need to be doing things that will stimulate us. Togetherness. Not always me preaching to you. Just hanging out, man. Getting to know old Murphy. Yeah. Just getting to know old brother Wayne. Huh? Just getting to know you, buddy. You know, I don't get to hang out with you every day. And when I get to sit down and across the table from you and, and, and get to drink a little coffee or drink a little soda or water and just sit down and get to, you know, chew the fat with old Ricky, I get to know more about old Ricky. Get to understand his passion visions, his dreams, his desire. Where he sees himself this time next year. Then I have a better vision of what I can do as his brother to make that come about. You understand? Because if I edify him and build him, guess what God does for me? He builds me. So when we start preferring one another over ourselves, make me preach sister I'm telling you when we start preferring one another oh as true family members of God I want to tell you God's going to open up the heavens on us and pour us out a blessing that we cannot even contain 
Now let me finish this out right here. Brother Rick, if you'll come to the piano and help me. He is still here, right? There he is. First, I want to bring to your attention, we must come back to the place that we will do anything short of sin to reach people without Christ. If you don't have that wrote down yet, you ought to have it wrote down. To do anything short of sin to reach people for Christ. That, me, that right there needs to be your number one focus and mission starting out in this year. And the second is our mission statement of New Life Church is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. You ought to be doing anything short of sin to get a hold of them. And then after you get a hold of them, do anything you can to teach them how to live right. I'll never forget the young man that I led to the Lord. He was lived a wild life. He didn't know anything about God. Didn't, he was so unchurched his whole life. Didn't know nothing about church and how to live right. He grew up hard, man. Grew up in a real wild family where, you know, they allowed him to drink and smoke and, and everything at a very young age. You know, his parents would let him drink and smoke and everything. He was just hard to the core, man. But the night he gave his heart to Jesus, all that changed. Now, he still grew up in an environment, my friend, and he didn't, his vocabulary didn't halfway make sense. Because the words that he would put in sentences didn't belong there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. And we were talking, you know, and he was so excited about what God was doing in his life. And he was telling me, and Justin, it was hilarious. He was telling me, he said, man, I just can't believe what God is doing. He just took it off the blank scale. I said, oh, my God, man, you just cussed. He said, what I say? <laughs> and I told him, he said, oh, is that bad? Yeah, dude, you don't say that no more. Okay, I won't say that one. We was going on just a little bit later, you know, we was doing some fishing and stuff, and, and we got to talking again, Brother Murphy, and he was so amped up, you know, he was so on fire for God, man. He loved the Lord so much, and he was talking about something, you know, and he's talking about how he hate the devil. He said, I'd just like to bust him right in his blankety blank mouth. I said, man, what are you doing? And he said, what? He didn't know the scripture said, let not filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. He didn't know that. He just got saved. Brand new baby in Christ. So you know what my job was? To teach him how to become a fully devoted follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my duty now. I had to teach him. I can't just tell him, man, you can't say them words. He looked at me and said, why not, man? That make me a bad person? I said, no. Just remember, it can damage your witness. He said, like, okay. Well, well what is it, is it against the Bible? I said, yes, sir. Let not filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. New Testament commandment. And he said, oh. I began to see his life change. His life began to mold and change and move in a different direction. And the reason why was is that I looked at him as my duty. He was my brother. And it was my duty to teach him how to walk. Huh? Don't you remember when your babies were little? Huh? You, used to, you didn't just throw them out there and let them fall on top of everything. I can tell you right now, I was a nervous wreck when my kids were walking. I was always trying to catch them. Whoa! My wife said, Lenny, I said, bust that head open on something look at him he, he can't walk you know and I was always trying to help him but it's amazing to me how they can fall down so many times but yet still I've seen my little boy you know he's not little no more but I've seen that little boy fall down and just I mean I, I'm running oh God he's hurt Tracy said She walked over there and just put her hand on him. He looks up. He's okay. He's up trying to go again. You know what he needed? All he needed to know that you were there. You've seen me fall down here. How many of you will just be real right here and say, there's been times that you really just needed somebody to notice. 
I've been to church before and told God, if somebody don't recognize my need tonight, I'm not going back. And I'll be real with you. The people that hug my neck and tell me they love me, if they really love me, they know me. They'll know who I am. They'll understand my pain. They'll know that something ain't right on the inside of me, God. I'll tell you something. Don't forsake your family. Get to know who your neighbor is. I want to challenge you to do something. You know, I, I preached a little bit about it the other day. And I told you, I said, a lot of times, you know, we get familiar with one little place we sit in. And I told you a little story about an old couple that sat in their place. And I came in, you know, and preached a revival there. And a young family that had been trying to get to come had came in and sat down in their place. And the old man and the old lady was so rude and told them to get up. Went to another place and another old sanctimonious couple come in and told them to get out of their seat. They got up and they started out the door. Me and the pastor were standing there and they said, well, I guess we'll leave because everybody's seats are taken. We didn't come back. I said this to say this. Why don't you, why don't you do me, just give me an analogy, come on. Why don't you do me a favor? Sit by that guy. You ain't got to really know him yet. Come here, little brother. Won't you go over there and sit between me and this young man? You ain't, you ain't never really got to meet them. You shook the hand and coming and going, right? But you really never got to meet them, have you? You and this guy ain't never got really good to play, have you? do it, you can do it, I promise you, come here, Lori is a sweetheart, meet her, you understand what I'm telling you, get to know your family, this is one of the most precious gifts on earth that God has gave us, family, how many times do we just blow by each other in passing, and we never get to know, huh? I mean, Lillian is a sweetie. If you haven't got to know Lillian, you are missing something. I'm being for real. If you don't know Lillian, you are missing it. If, you, if Rachel, my God, you don't get no sweeter. I mean, she'll pray for you when you're sick. I, you can call on her, and she'll be faithful. To, I'm, am, I, am I talking out of turn? I'm telling you the truth, if I've ever said anything. need to know your family it's like being married to somebody that you don't even know you know what happens to marriages that don't fellowship they split up they fall apart and they don't stay together why because they're not fellowshipping each other they're not telling each other each other's problems and needs and desires and you see my wife and myself you know it's not just good enough to always be fluffy with her I can't always just pet her and tell her how wonderful everything is all the time. Sometimes I got to go to her and I got to pour myself out to her when I'm hurting, when I'm bruised, when I'm battered, and I don't have nobody to talk to, and I feel like my heart is breaking, and I need to get it out. I sit down with her, and I begin to share that with her, and it bonds a unity between us. I've had... I've had more preachers tell me this, and it makes me want to vomit, that you can't befriend your people in the church. Haven't we heard that? Huh? You know what I mean? We've heard it. We've been told it. Don't befriend your people in the church. You can't get close to them because they'll hurt you and they'll leave you. I'll tell you something. You're my family. I desire to get close to you. I don't want to be untouchable, Pastor. I want to know you. I want you to know me. I want us to be a, a unit together, following the will of God together in faith. Because when we become that, we become in one mind and one accord, serving the one God, hallelujah, and for one reason and one mission and one purpose, to glorify God in the Son. Stand with me all over the building. 
Stretch your hands towards heaven. God, help me not forget the family. Lord, I pray tonight that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will fill me to overflow with an anointing, God, to be sensitive not only to you, Jesus, but also to my brothers and sisters. When there's a need, I feel it. And when they're hurting, we hurt with them. When they're filled with joy, we rejoice with them. They cry, we cry. Help us, Jesus, to be sensitive one to another. That we will love each other the way the early church loved each other. And God, that it will draw the attention of the unchurched world. Because, Lord, everybody wants to be loved, everybody wants to be heard, and everybody wants to be noticed. And I pray that, God, we will be able to do that in Christ. Lord, I pray that you will draw this church family right here. Draw us closer together in unity of mind, soul, and spirit. That, God, we will serve you in the unity of faith to walk with you in spirit and truth. God, we serve notice on the devil in your name. That we refuse today to let anything divide us. We stand together. We're united together in the name of Jesus. We're connected together by the power of the blood of Jesus. It's our strength. It's our molding force. I'm asking you right now, Jesus... That we will be able, Lord, to reach into each other when one of us is missing in church. I pray that, God, our hearts, our hearts would grieve until we find out the need. Help us, God, to be more compassionate. To be more sensitive to our families. God, that we would not only just be hearers of the word, but become actual doers. Tonight, God, grant this, I pray, that Jesus will be lifted and glorified in our lives. I pray that tonight that every one of you in this building will see the urgency, everything in your hearts, to connect, to connect to your brothers, to your sisters. As the day is approaching and the evil hour is at hand, we're going to need each other more than we have ever needed each other in our lives. It's not a day to run away from the church and separate ourselves, but it's a day to unite. It's a day that we pull together. Strengthen each other. Encourage one another. At least one of us slip into a spirit of unbelief. I pray for your people, Jesus. I pray for my brothers and sisters. And I ask you tonight that you would give them strength in full measure. Take them out into this world this week that they may be a living testimony for Christ. They will witness the gospel of Jesus Christ under the unction and power of the Holy Ghost. That God, the unity between this, this fellowship right here would grow from this day forward. That this world will wake up and recognize that there is a remnant of God. There is a church that's filled with love and tender mercy and compassion of Jesus Christ. We ask it tonight together in faith. Let it be done in Jesus' name. And all God's children says amen. And amen. Hug your neighbor next to you. Tell him, say, I sure do love you. I love you. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Go in the love and mercy of the Lord. Don't forget Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. Tell them about Teen Challenge coming. Believe God for deliverance and pray. Pray before you come. God bless you.